Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun-filled DIY weekend here aboard Athena. It is freezing cold here in Denmark, but with a little bit of luck and a lot of sanding, I should be able to get primer on a big section of the inside of the hull this weekend. You might be wondering how I can paint when it's well below freezing. The answer to that question is a low temperature hardener, but more about this guy a little later on. Ta-da! 80 millimeter stainless machine screws. Eighty millimeters, eight millimeters, eight millimeters, eighty millimeters. It's funny how big of a difference a zero makes. Over the last two weekends, I've failed pretty hard at ordering machine screws. I won't actually need these until the spring when I start mounting more deck hardware. I just wanted to show you guys that I'm actually capable of ordering the correct length machine screws. When I asked you guys for advice on where I should order stainless steel goodies, a lot of you recommended Westfield Fasteners.co.uk. So far, I am very pleased with them, so I'll include a link for their website down in the description. As you might recall from last weekend's video, I ended up removing the old water tank, and then I started scrubbing the inside of the hull. The hull is basically as clean as I'm gonna get it, so this weekend I'm gonna start sanding and then apply paint. But first, Let's just get this old water pump out of the way. Well, as you can see, I haven't cleaned this compartment, but we'll get to that after I've removed the pump. This pump is in perfect working order, and I'm quite pleased with it. It's not too noisy, and it works, so I'm gonna save this. The pump is in good working order, but the uh, mounting bracket, well, it's not quite pristine. This thing does look a little bit crusty, but I think it's worth it to clean up and save it. The pump was mounted to what I'm assuming is a piece of plywood. Oh, that is certainly nice and crusty. It's kind of gooey. Huh. A quick bit of scrubbing and this should be ready for a glorious, glorious sanding tomorrow. I did notice a few comments asking what I used to clean the inside of the hull with in the last video. And it's just this stuff, which is just run-of-the-mill, cheap stuff that you use before painting. I don't know what to call it in English, but this entire thing was maybe 10 bucks. Ta-da! That looks a lot better. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning. It's windy, it's cold, and it's just barely starting to snow. Let's uh, head up inside. Last night, I noticed something that may throw a little tiny wrench into my plan this weekend of painting this area. But uh, let me go ahead and show you. Forgive me if I get the terminology wrong. I don't know if this is referred to as a floor and this as a stringer in a grid layout like this, but whatever this thing is called, there's a tiny hole down here that someone drilled, I guess to allow water to drain. But the annoying thing here is that the compartment in front of this floor is dry and yet there's water here. That has me worried that the water that's coming out of this is coming from the plywood core within it. 
This hole seems like some kind of afterthought. I don't think it's a part of the original design, especially because there's another hole, a similar sized hole, only about a centimeter from it. This doesn't sound delaminated, and the plywood core in here feels firm, not soft and rotten. Last night before leaving, I wiped up the little bit of water that was here, so the stuff you saw that was here this morning is all the stuff that seeped out during the night. Now I guess this little hole here could just have been partly clogged up, and the water we saw here this morning was actually water that I used to scrub the forward compartment with earlier in the week. I think the only logical next step is to take a closer look. Yep, it is certainly wet in there. Of course, that raises the question, what the heck do I do about this? I believe this is very much a structural part of the boat, so of course you don't want that to fail. Now on the one hand, these have been on here for 30 years. I'm pretty sure they've been soaking wet for 20 of those years and they're still okay. On the other hand, replacing them wouldn't be that big of a job and it would be nice to know that they're all new and spiffy. I don't know. I'm gonna have to check with some experts. This is the stuff I pulled out of there. I had to break it up into three little pieces to get it out with that tiny hole saw I used. But, I mean, it, it does feel... Some of it is a little crumbly, but then... Yeah, well, we can all agree that's not great, but it does feel pretty solid, actually. This is not super rotten, but it's definitely not pristine. I've removed all of the plywood from a tiny bit of laminate here. Now, I know in some modern boats, the strength of those structural members, let's call them floors, comes from the laminate and not any kind of coring material but this is only three and a half millimeters thick. I think it's safe to say that the plywood core in these is very much a part of what gives them their strength. And uh, what happens when the core looks like this? Well, like I said, I don't know. I'll have to check with some experts. Well, one thing's certain, I'm not gonna be painting this weekend, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to showing you guys this low temperature hardener and also, with all of the sanding, I had this little bit planned where I would be wearing this Tyvek suit, and then underneath that, I would wear this. This is a prototype for a new t-shirt. It says, Oh Glorious Sanding, and it has my favorite random orbital sander on there, the Boss GEX 125-150. And I was gonna do this hilarious bit where I was wearing it underneath the Tyvek suit and kind of like a Superman thing, but alas, the best laid plans of mice and men. Just to make absolutely sure that we're all on the same page here, I'm not upset that I've found this issue. It's easily fixable. Even if I need to replace all of them, it's maybe a month, two months worth of work, and then it's done. So yeah, it's just more content. Sure, it's annoying that I don't get to show you this area all spiffied up with primer this weekend, but the weekend is not a complete loss. I can put back the cabin sole relatively quickly, and then we can take a look at the other water tank. This is the water tank I removed last weekend, and as you can see, it's not doing that well. This is the bottom weld, and at some point that started leaking, so someone tried fixing it with a bit of fiberglass and some resin. That's a fix, but it's not a long-term fix. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a complete waste of time to at least take a look at that other tank. Ta-da! That took maybe five minutes, and it makes moving around in here a lot easier. My main reason for putting back the cap and sole is because I need to move this in order to be able to access the water tank that's down here. Now, what the heck is holding this thing in place? I think the answer to that question might be almost nothing. 
There is a piece of wood wedged against the side of the settee down here, but I think that is about it. I've just noticed that there is quite a severe bend in the connection to the tank down there, so I wonder if there's any water left in this thing. Oh, that's quite a bit of water. Now, if only I had some kind of pump that I could hook up to this and just drain the tank. Hmm. Oh. This is all looking pretty crusty and this hose down here, it's leaking from that bend. Whatever this is, it is really hard. So for me to get this onto the pump, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of heat. Dang it, I really liked my idea of hooking up that pump, but uh, yeah, I can hear the hose down there sucking in air and yeah, this is not gonna work. How come the pump started working, you might be wondering. Could it be because I removed a little bit of hose down here with that bend in it and quite a noticeable hole, by the way? Or could it simply be because I'd hooked the pump up the wrong way round? Well, I guess we'll never know. And now let's never speak of this again. But look at that hole. I mean, I had no idea that was there. Certainly poking around old boats is never a waste of time. I think I've found something else I can paint later on this winter. That's not really on there that well. There is that piece of wood that's wedged in there to secure the tank. Oh, holy smokes, that was really in there. Yep, that was the only thing holding the tank in there. It is loose now. Turns out loosening the tank yesterday was relatively easy compared to trying to remove the dang thing. I spent hours yesterday nudging this thing back and forth, trying to get it out, but uh, I finally arrived at the conclusion that this thing cannot be removed without getting a little aggressive. There just isn't enough room for these two connections to the tank here to swing past this. So I think I'm just gonna have to cut a piece out of this. Fortunately, my oscillating multi-tool here should make short work of that. Now, if I just cut a little bit off this connection for the vent, then I should be able to tilt this out of here. Ugh. Oh, woohoo! It doesn't actually look too bad down here. I mean, <laughs> there is a little bit of junk down here, but other than that, at first glance, it looks pretty good. This is what the bottom of that tank looks like. As you can see, there are no repairs, but of course that might just be because it was really difficult to get out. Now, how the heck do I get this thing out of here? To be able to lift it up and out, I need to lift it 45 centimeters to clear the bottom of the settee there. And I've only got 27 centimeters up here. Yeah, that is not gonna work. So far, so good. Now it should just be a matter of swinging it out and putting it up. Whew. 
I haven't fully decided what to do about the old tanks yet. Well, I mean, the first one is a goner. I'm not going to attempt to get that repaired or anything like that. I'm just going to put in a new tank. But the second one looks a lot better than the first one, and I don't see any obvious signs of leaks. So maybe I should go ahead and just put this one back in. What do you guys think? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. As a replacement for the first tank, I am very tempted to go with a tank made out of plastic, a custom designed plastic tank, because I can't find any off the shelf plastic tanks that come even close to the right dimensions. I've gotten a single quote for a custom designed plastic tank from a British company. The tank itself was 550 pounds, British pounds. Unfortunately, the shipping was 250 British pounds. And that combined brings us to just shy of 1100 US dollars, which is a little bit more than I'm prepared to spend on a tank. I know, I know, that is a lot of money. But a plastic tank would last basically forever. And there are a few other companies that I could get quotes from. So uh, I think we'll come back to this topic in a future video. But I really like the idea of a plastic tank. I've tidied up the area in here just a tiny bit. And it looks pretty good. I mean, there's no obvious issues here. There's nothing rotten. A bit of sanding and some paint here. And this should be good. But I'm very interested to see what's hiding underneath here. Dang it. Who the heck designs a boat so that it can have standing water in closed off compartments you can't even get access to? Frickin' morons, that's who. Satan or Hilvildeus. This is very similar to what I found underneath the cabin sole last year. There is a cutout for a limber hole down there, but when they glass this in, they forgot to cut the hole in the glass, so the limber hole is blocked. That of course means the water gets trapped up here in this compartment. And sure, I could just drill a hole through that glass and open up the limber hole, that would drain the water from this compartment into this compartment. But that wouldn't really help me because this compartment doesn't drain to the bilge either. This is the other side of that compartment and look, not even a cutout for a limber hole. And there is also no way for water to get from this compartment if there had been a limber hole there, the water would just be trapped here because, well, it would rise up to that hole and then go to the bilge. But this is just... I mean, this is not just one guy forgetting to cut through some fiberglass. This is a design problem. It's easily fixed. I mean, it's just a matter of drilling some holes and sealing up those holes and they're problem solved. That's not why I'm miffed. It's just such a stupid, stupid thing not to have thought out. I mean, I wonder if all the warrior boats are built like this or if it's just mine that was built on a Friday afternoon. I'm not going to drill any holes today. I want to think this through. I'm just going to scoop out the water and let the inside of the hull dry. Okay, all nice and dry. Well, dryish. I am so glad I decided to take a closer look in here. That was one of the last areas I had yet to inspect. There's one tiny little area out in the forward cabin and then there's the area underneath the diesel tank. But once I've taken a look at those two, there shouldn't be any more hidden surprises. I am gonna spend the rest of the day just tidying up here aboard Athena. She desperately needs it. But uh, yeah, I am a strong believer in ending these videos on a positive note. So I wanna show you something awesome that showed up in my mailbox yesterday. Yeah, as you can see, tidying up much needed. But uh, yeah, I think this is a first for me. Look what I got, a drawing. I think that might be Athena, that could be me, and that could be Jökul. Thank you so much for the awesome drawing, Yael. I don't have a fridge to put it up on, but I do have a bulkhead. Ta-da! While I tidy up, I'm going to contemplate how the heck I'm gonna get this thing out of here. 
I think I might have to cut it in half, but uh, that is going to be an adventure for next weekend. And on that note, that is going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.